Salvas to Noble. Black Rhino Ranger's birthday. So today, we're going to take a look at the rare reveal, fun things you didn't know about Viva Pinata. Well, of course I am, Serpent. Well, I think you of course anyway. So, let's get you a treatment of kindness. Thank you, but I'm going to do that, right? This Hello again. We're back with another rare gem whose depth we've already mined in making a video in Rare Replay. But this is a series so powerful. Ooh, the series. We easily but still gotta rewind just to because I'm dying. We couldn't say mm -hmm. man of Viva Pinata. Who could? Look at it. So, come on. Very safe, Squishy. They're so beautiful. Garden. Woo! A lot of name calling. Yes. With 60 species in the first game alone, there was a whole lot of stuff to name in Viva Piñata. But first we had to, you know, find a name for the game. Naming in Piñata was Ooh, that's a name. Process. First of that's all, we still had a, game a little bit different. Piñata. So we just called it Piñata inside Rare. Ooh, and that's Piñata. That's still got an animal and a candy. candy. It wasn't a name it's that a you could name. trademark or license or do any of those kind of corporate things with. So we had to think of there's something new that was something Piñata. That's so very something new. But how do you prefer to about this? The list of all the ridiculous this things. is because so different, though. Imagination, and we got something useful. That's but we had different. Quite a lot of dreadful things. <laughs> uh, yes, lots of pinata. Um, Ooh, that's a lot of pinata coming down. Pinata came out at the end because it's coming the animals. Was, uh, life, so living pinata that it seemed to fit. Thank goodness. Also on the short list were loco pinata, which would have been fine, and whole lot of pinata, which wouldn't. So kind of That's stylish, now, isn't it? what about naming all those individual beasties? And then the same naming process went for all the animals as well. Because That's all those a little, little bit animals. And because then we got the pinata thing, we needed that to be sweet related. And again, we did lots of those in-house in the team. And then, um, hey, we that still got it half. What am I going to do with that? In the UK or only available in certain countries. And actually, mm. they weren't international named at all. In fact, some of them came out as rude things. That we didn't really know at the time. <laughs> we're perfect <laughs> innocence, but we'd, we'd already got a reputation of trying to get rude things into games. So we were kind of under double Oh, but seriously, love the, the games. Time for quite a little bit of action. Anyway, let's not dwell on that. We've got hard facts to get through. Number two, absent piñata friend. One of the things we're asked most often is, what didn't make it into VP1 and 2? And we've mentioned a few things over the years, like the kangaroo piñata and the rattlesnake and the idea of traveling the world. Man, that's a lot of gaming for other that. just didn't work out in the end and why. The, the complex nature of piñata meant that it was um, a technical minefield, I think. In, uh, Man, uh, that was a lot of piñata. Uh, but how the clan about that? He changed in the AI side of things. And I can remember the, the horrific nightmares of trying to get animals of all shapes and sizes to work together. I can remember particularly at one point we were trying to experiment with whether you Very could have of different sizes so you could play... Uh, some sort of potion or some sort of trading card on them and they would grow and shrink and I think it was the giraffes that eventually made him lose his rag because they were these tiny things in terms That's of a little bit of series but seriously so they were there into all the trees and How do you know with that? They never made it. There were so many animals that didn't, didn't make it so many, so many different animals there was, there was water animals as well that we wanted to try and get in at one point it was like fish and Particularly for, for VP2 as well. Very particular. Because, um, we had, we had well, that seems a little bit different. Like shark and things like that that were just going to be aquatic Ooh. animals. So, yeah, you never really saw aquatic animals. But we did get it in because the cat, um, cat girl in the in the pet shop, she's got a goldfish. 
um, in a goldfish ball on the head. And that, that right at the start, that was Well, really I cool. remember the human when you play game. Yeah, got it in there, so. But how do you bring it? Just, it was her. The, trying to get. It's still a little bit different. All sorts of situations. And every time that we had a new feature, be it it's like squazzles climbing trees or swimming animals. Every time we tried to add well, to the Well, that's really to make different sure species. How do you know? And then inevitably one wouldn't work. One wouldn't work in some way, shape, or form. So they had to go back and patch up cases. And just trying to debug all this was uh, was horrendous. But it was worthwhile in the end. That's for sure. Oh, they really love the game! What came out of it. But how do you know that? <laughs> Number three, the gold TV premiere. When Viva Pinata was announced back in the day, the word universe was used. And another big part of the Viva Piñata universe was the TV show. Here's the quick fire scoop and how that came about. And That's how very that quickly. Played off one another. So while That's we're still all the hit on the TV uh, series. series, how do you know when um, they're not? We ideas about how successful mm -hmm. it was going to be and how amazing it was going to be. Amazing. Like marketing and toys and all those things. So um, we actually got uh, a partnership with uh, four kids to create a cartoon. They were commissioned to make a, uh, a cartoon, you know, children's cartoon series to support the support the game and you know sort of vice versa to sort of build the IP up. We started developing a cartoon series which basically took out That's the characters underrated. and made it into a, a How do you know cartoon. That? Uh, four kids had got some ideas they wanted some humour and that suited us at Rare. Um, we weren't particularly bothered that we we're going to fo exactly follow the plot of the game because we wanted to give them the freedom to make the best TV show yep. possible. That seemed like Everything's a little bit thing. adventurer. Oh. Really kind of like got a lot of animals to do that. Together. Um, we did a lot of, the team themselves did a lot of reviews of the work and the scripts that came back. So from a design point of view, people were looking how the script works with the design and from a visual point of view as well. And it was kind of cool working with people. Well, that, that guy's got it cool. The, game you're making. the girl's got it cool. It's going, go on, do it. And uh, yeah, we brushed at the chance. I remember thinking that seeing Mumbo Still at thinking. E3 had been a kind of a big deal, but to see like, you know, a big cartoon series being commissioned for you know something that we were making and then and when the game launched there was a big party they had at um santa monica pier and they built i think it was the world's biggest pinata and a few of a few of the team that's still good to the biggest so that, it was a big, big deal it? we always knew that we yeah that's really different but see a little bit rare we was and they, they kind of used it in the cartoon before we even got it in VP2. So it was good, good relationship. So there were situations where I think it was the jelly, a sort of yeti type creature. The first time anyone saw that um, was actually in the cartoon rather than the game. So it's sort of trailblazed a, a character for us. And then the cartoon actually fed back into the game too, because uh, Langston, who set the, the challenges in uh, Trouble in Paradise, he came from the cartoon. And so we got a bit of the character, got a bit of the feel of the, the cartoon in our sequel. So no scandal, nothing. We all got on really well and respected each other's work. Yep. How's anyone still any respect to let you? Problem? Honestly. <laughs> Number four. Experiencing vision. Speaking of the sequel, let's hear about one edition that brought life through a lens to Viva Pinata Trouble in Paradise. Uh, when we got to the end of Man, the that was the one, sequel. Um, I think a lot of the, the Give me the reason I'm telling you about what we'd produce, but always knew there was there was more. Uh, to create and whilst we lost quite a few people over to the, the yeah but still create engineers all got together because we had all these still different line for trading for streamlining a lot of the, the processes so one of the features for trouble in paradise was the use of the live vision camera microsoft had just launched um what was effectively a webcam for the xbox our lead engineer will brian had seen it and one day he came to me and said we could do something with yep it. Um, and that story it. depends QR on that like that's that, a lot of stories to, that I'm you telling know, you on and number four in well, this show, you didn't know himself. about that. This was a home project I, that he brought into I barely do that. And he'd done a little demonstration where he had the camera but on that desk is a serious and thing. Marco, and it made I'm telling you. And instantly, I love that Still idea. Creation. I love the idea of a real world object mm -hmm. that we could use all over the shop if we wanted to. And he turned Pinata Vision from barcodes into... Um, pinatas, accessories, animals, weathers that would just appear in the garden. And I think this captured a lot of people's imaginations. I had visions of us actually putting posters with That's still crazy. And snap with a camera and then scan those in and That's actually get still new a little bit different. The game. So I really liked the idea straight away. That's so we kind still of jumped on it and developed it to almost 
despite an event, <sighs> we kind of just went and did it independently. Microsoft never really asked for it. We just thought it was a good idea and went, <laughs> and went ahead to put it in. It was cool. It just kept our community together again for another whole year. <sighs> And we have to say, the VP online community was an awesome community. You did good, Internet. You did good. <laughs> Number five, getting quite vocal. We heard earlier how the development team got involved in picking out piñata names, but it didn't stop there. Those piñata voices? Not real animal noises. Oh, no. Classic, old school, rare. We did it ourselves. VP followed the, the tradition of rare games. Of, Man, um, that's even the games, rare. The, uh, the actual voices of the characters. But that's the a lot of so, voices to um, do my that. My favorite one is the mouse, uh, which was voiced by Rico, um, you know, a Japanese woman that, that I worked with for quite some time. Um, she was the mouse, and, and that's why the mouse is a Japanese mouse. That's why it says choo instead of squeak. Yep, still creative. Coo, 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 coo. There are some obvious ones like frogs croak and. But they were things like the swan, or I remember I remember doing the swan. Alyssa, Alyssa did the swan. She was a she was an animator. Right like that guy. Got the swan. I always came up with a piece. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. And, um, she said, "Well, what should I do?" And I said, well, "It's a swan. You just do a posh." Let's go get a little bit engaging in here. And that's what she kind of did, and I thought it was good. <laughs> that's the laughter. I was going to be the goose, but I, I I don't voice any of the characters in the game. I was going to be the goose. But that day, I had hey, that Canadian goose, what still's a little bit talking, what you? Good idea, my light player. Can you know about that? It's a rare one, too. I can't remember I know it had a voice after a very short time. And that's pretty much how it was. You know, they signed up whether they wanted to do voices or not, and then we Grant would arrange an appointment and we'd come up to the music studio and record it as we went along. Ladies and gentlemen, the donut. Voices. Well done, James. Of course, there's one other recognizable rare voice in the game that isn't a piñata, isn't there? Hmm. Hello? So I was asked to do placeholder voice acting for Lee Foss. Um, and, um, <laughs> oh, that? That's a human! You didn't do all the TV series of the human! Since you started to get seeds from him, Justin, who was directing me, uh, asked me to. Man, that was a story. That was quite my different, was kind of six or seven isn't time, it? So I was doing a lot of research. Well, that's and good. I always read Lee Foss's lines. So it, she sounds a little bit condescending. You know that? She does sound like she's talking to a child. And I still get people asking, like, when they realize that I was the voice of Lee Foss, oh, say something in Lee Foss. And I always go, Congratulations, you've got a <laughs> Know about that. Not many people know this. I was Cameo's jump voice. All I had to do was stand in front of a microphone and go, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Some days are, are better than others, to be fair. Lee Foss was a good day. <laughs> and on that note, we're done. We have smashed open the piñata of knowledge and gorged ourselves yep, on the Yep, that's contents. still knowledge. And now the party's over and we feel a bit funny. But if you're still hungry, check out our five things rundown for other games. In the meantime, we're going to curl up inside a fudge hog house. Look, it's so nice in there. Well, and that's about it. See you next time. Tomorrow, it's going to be the Jeffy's 18th birthday. It's the longest SML video ever! Oh, it's over. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Well, that's it, folks. Bye bye. <laughs>